Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by a tissue, an organ and an organ system. You should then be able to identify the main organs in the digestive system and state their functions. In a previous video we saw that cells are often specialised, in other words they've got adaptations to help them carry out their function. A good example of this is muscle cells. These can contract, in other words get shorter. That's because they contain special protein fibres which can change their length. Muscle cells are also packed full of mitochondria which provide the energy needed for contraction. Muscle cells work together to form muscle tissue and this brings us to the definition of a tissue. A tissue is a group of cells with a similar structure and function. It's really important that you learn that definition. Now an organ is a group of tissues working together for a specific function and a good example is the stomach. This contains muscle tissue and also glandular tissue which releases enzymes. Finally organs are grouped into organ systems which work together to form organisms. A good example of an organ system is the digestive system which we're looking at in this video. Before we start we need to look at the nutrients we find in food. Food contains three main nutrients, carbohydrates such as starch, protein and lipids which are also called fats. All of these are large molecules, in fact they're too large to be absorbed into the bloodstream so they have to be digested. During digestion large food molecules are broken down into small molecules by enzymes. The small molecules can then be absorbed into the bloodstream. I'm showing you a picture of the human digestive system here. I'm going to give you an overview of the main functions of the different organs. We'll be looking at some of them in more detail in later videos. First food is chewed in the mouth. Enzymes in the saliva begin to digest the starch into smaller sugar molecules. The food then passes down the esophagus into the stomach. In the stomach enzymes begin the digestion of proteins. A key point is that the stomach also contains hydrochloric acid which helps the enzymes to digest proteins. The food spends several hours in the stomach. The churning action of the stomach muscles turns the food into a fluid, increasing the surface area for enzymes to digest. The fluid now passes into the small intestine. Now at this point chemicals are released into the small intestine from the liver and the pancreas. The pancreas releases enzymes which continue the digestion of starch and protein. They also start the digestion of lipids. The liver releases bile which helps to speed up the digestion of lipids. Bile also neutralizes the acid released from the stomach. Now at this point the fluid makes its way down the rest of the small intestine. The walls of the small intestine release enzymes to continue the digestion of protein and lipids. Now in the small intestine the small food molecules produced by digestion are absorbed into the bloodstream either by diffusion or by active transport and we'll be looking at that again in a later video. Now the fluid makes its way through the large intestine where water is absorbed into the bloodstream and finally the faeces is released from the body. So remember that in the digestive system large food molecules are digested into smaller molecules and then the products of digestion are absorbed into the bloodstream. Now the products of digestion are then used by the body to build new carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. Some of the glucose produced is used in respiration. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on the digestive system in my vision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Ok so hopefully now you should be able to describe what's meant by a tissue, an organ and an organ system. You should then be able to identify the main organs in the digestive system and state their functions.